questions are made, you really have a heart of the monetization live streams. So I appreciate everyone coming by and checking me out for the last month and a half. Um, you know, it's helping me get to that goal. So thank you all. All right. So what we just want to do, we have our first guest in the house, Rockamon. Always appreciate seeing you inside the chat. Thank you so much. So as we go on um, and go to the first presentation, we will be sharing the screen on how our money is made. We also be looking at error coins, some basic error coins, such as some quarters, some pennies, and we can actually see some double dies. Um, I know people who've been in the coin community for years have definitely seen these things. They probably posted some of these coins on eBay and received some sales, or they may have bought some in the past just to put in their collection. So it's nothing new to people who've been around for a while, but I think it's still pretty interesting because you never know what you may find. Um, I shared the story yesterday, live stream, that when I was at 7-Eleven, a young lady brought um, in a $2 bill that belonged to her grandfather. Now, I don't know if her granddad knew that she was spending this $2 bill from his collection, but it's just a perfect example how certain coins or um, paper currency can end back up in circulation without um, anyone knowing. She could have easily bought in a Walking Liberty half dollar. She could have easily bought in a 1964 JFK half dollar or a 1954 Benjamin Franklin half dollar. And that now that half silver half dollar could have been in circulation. It could have been passed off to someone else. It could have been found. Just like a uh, one cent could have been put into um, circulation as well. That could have been like a 1934 one cent that had a double die error, which could have been worth anywhere from, say, $5. It could have easily been put into that 7-Eleven yesterday without anyone knowing until it ended up in one of our pockets, a person who does know what they have. So this is another reason why I wanted to present that today. OK, so this is what I want to show. Coins for kids. Okay, let's see here. So how are coins made? We have um, Jim Turner in the house. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming in. Thank you. And we also have cons 671 in the house. Thanks, cons. Always good to see you inside the chat, you know always joining me for the live stream. I appreciate you all. And if you have a channel, please put a number one in the chat so I can acknowledge it. If you have a video that you just placed or put out, let me know so I can go check it out and leave a comment to help you um, get the word out. This is what I like to do. So um, cons, once again, brother, thank you so much for coming in. To throw your meme up there <laughs> as you know i had to okay rock a Maz in the house giving um how salutations to um cons so jim turner thank you for joining us appreciate you being here today okay yeah finally got time to join in <laughs> i appreciate that thank you so much all right so this is the today's video i want to talk about how coins are made for kids now i know that we are not kids but for the um, person who just beginning this is a simple way and knowing the process so let's check out this video okay turn my volume down It all starts in Washington, D.C. Before a coin ever becomes a coin, it has to be voted on by Congress. All in favor, say cha-ching. If Congress thinks it's a good idea and the president approves it, 
A new coin is authorized for the United States Mint to make. Did you know there are six mint locations in the United States? This is an artist at the Mint. He draws pictures of what the coin will look like. If you had to make a coin, what would you put on it? The president? A dog? Maybe the president's dog. See how big we draw the coin? That's so we can sketch all the tiny details. Just think if the Mint really made coins this big, we'd all have to get bigger pockets. Okay, first thing. How many Mints are in the United States and who can name all the Mints? Let's see who in the chat can name all six Mints in the United States. Let's go. Let's see who will be there first. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Once, Once we decide on the look of the coin, the sculptors at the Mint will either model the design in a computer or model it in clay. When the clay model is finished, we make a plaster cast of it and sharpen the details. Then we scan the plaster cast into a computer. This turns the model into computer data. Computer software uses the data to drive cutting tools. The cutter mills the coin designs onto blank hubs that will stamp dies. After that, all the dies are checked. Only the best dies are used to make coins. Then the mint feeds big rolls of metal into the side of the machine. Out of the other side, blank metal discs come pouring out. This machine cuts up the scrap. One roll of metal is as long as five football fields and can make up to 325,000 blanks. Now it's time to heat up the blanks to make them soft. Then they're cooled. Then they're given a bath. And finally, they're dried off. Look how clean and shiny they are, or what we like to call minty fresh. The blanks are sent to a machine called the upsetting mill. The upsetting mill raises the rim on both sides of the blank to prepare it for the coin press. Remember the dies we made earlier? They're now inside the coin press. This machine presses. Okay, so we look, this is one of the basic errors that I see. Um, you have some coins that have the um, readed edge. You have some coins that don't have readed edge. Um, now, as we see, this helps the coin in order to be pressed, but a lot of errors come around this point. Um, earlier quarters um, from 1964 and before do, do, had a higher relief, and a lot of errors came from when it printed on the, the legend. So we had doubling that occurred. You also had a lot of uh, nicks when it came down to the um, readed edge. You also had um, problems with when the date was stamped on. So I want you to pay close attention because one thing I learned is that when I start seeing errors, some things could happen. And we found out some things just could not happen at the Mint. So we have um, post Mint and um, things that happen once it leaves the Mint. So some of the errors that we see or what, that's kind of relevant today that we kind of, we know that it could not happen at the Mint based off how this step occurs. We saw that the blanks were um, cut. They're a certain dimension. Um, I know finding some places that, you know, they said that dyes were, were stamping on the wrong planchet. Well, how could that happen? Um, out of, you've seen millions of coins that were created. How could it be put on the wrong planchet? Was it done on purpose? Um, I know some people may have heard about what happened in the Philadelphia Mint, you know? So just, just to kind of put this bug in your ear, exactly how can some of these errors happen by that much mistake, by putting it on the wrong planchet, by putting it on the wrong metal? You know, you have some coins that suppose have been silver, but they wind up being um, copper or they wind up, it's supposed to have been copper, but they wind up silver. How could that happen? You know, when you see that the steps are listed so clearly, okay? And we got Rocky Mountain um, Bear. How you feeling, my brother? 
He says Denver, Colorado, Fort Knox, Kentucky, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, San Francisco, California, Washington, D.C., West Point, and New York. Are these all? I thought it was only six. Are you talking about the ones that were um, in existence prior to being closed down? Because this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. That's eleven mint. Okay, the video said six. The six that are open today. <laughs> Because you just taught me something, some things I haven't seen. All right, let's go on. The die into the blank metal disc and makes a coin. The new coins are then checked for quality, counted, and put into a jumbo bag. Jumbo bag is then moved by forklift. Then and taken to the Federal Reserve Banks. From there, they will be sent to banks across the country. After that, you spend them on all sorts of stuff or save them for your very own coin collection. And that's it. Now you know how coins are made. To learn more about how the Mint connects America through coins or play online games and find lesson plans, visit our website. Thanks for watching. And there we have it. A simple video showing you how coins are made. Now, I hope that kind of clicked for those who don't know. It's basic steps um, that goes into making a coin from the artist creating it, then they put making it a mold, then them etching it on the um, the die. They making the uh, the right size of the coin. On the right metal, they put the coin through a rim. So when it does, when they do press it, everything's done right on that coin, how it's supposed to. The only issue is that maybe when a die kind of what wears thin, so that's when you start seeing errors, which this is one of the things that I had to learn. So um, this is why I wanted to show that video because it was given to me in a video that don't really pay attention to error. You can't really know what an error is unless you know exactly how coins are made because certain things are fake. And let me tell you why I believe um, certain things are fake. Um, let's, let me show you here. Okay, I have a video that I put up a couple of days ago. And this is one of the videos here. Let me show you. Um, and I can definitely tell you that I believe that these coins did not come out the mint like this. So let me show you. Wait, I've seen this coin before. Yeah, this one right here, this two cent euro. I seen it on Etsy for $445, all because of this error. Wait, I've seen this coin before. Yeah, this one right here, this two cent euro. I seen it on Etsy for $445, all because of this error. And another coin right here with Fabio on the back with this error. You never know where you're going to find these coins. I got money. <laughs> okay. Now, those errors look kind of fishy to me. You saw a big blob on the obverse side of that coin. Based off how... Um, we just watched the video on how a coin is created. When could that process ha happen? Like, when can that process happen? Like, when could have a big blob like that that raised up could have been placed on that coin, that process that we watched? To me, that looked like that was placed there by someone post mint damage. Let me know in the chat by a number one if you think that was a post mint damage of that blob on that per, on that coin's face, the obverse portion, because what part could that have been done when you have certain coins that go through a quality control? Okay, so that's number one. Now that is a, Euro, a European coin, so it could be that they have a different practice 
and making coins. But I just wanted to kind of bring that to everyone's attention. Like, when could that have happened to make that a legitimate error? Okay. The second coin also looked like two coins that were joined together by maybe some solder. Now, when I examine that two euro coin, if you look at the reeded or the um, yeah the reeded edge, it's smooth. There's no reeds. Number one. Number two. It does look like two coins joined together, unlike the bimetallic euro coin, two euro coin. So, but that coin there looked like it had a small piece of solder combining those two coins together, which would make it an error. But it looks like a post mint error. Someone did it. So I just want to show it one more time for those who did not see it, because I think that these are not true coin errors. So let's check that out one more time. Wait, I've seen this coin before. Yeah, this one right here, this two cent euro. I seen it on Etsy for four hundred and forty five dollars, all because of this error. And another coin right here with Fabio on the back with this error. You never know. We're going to find these coins. I got money. <laughs> so there we go. I think these two errors on these coins were not true errors. Now, based off what I'm about to show you now, this is an error list that I found on Google that I want to share. So let's check it out. These are top 13 errors coins worth money. All right. So we have here top 13 error coins worth money. I'm going to blow it up a little hot bigger so you can actually see it for those who have, who have eyes like me. Okay. All right. So we have here, this is written by Everett um, Millman, published January 4th, 2023, updated March 29th, 2023. So this is done this year. Okay. Now, the article goes on to say, hunting for error coins is one of the most exciting aspects of the coin collecting hobby. These odd looking coins are often some of the most valuable pieces that you can potentially find in pocket change. We'll be looking at a list of 13 valuable error coins from the United States. First, let's consider the different types of error coins and how you can find them in the wild. Um, that is in circulation. Okay. So types of coin errors. All error coins are essentially coin misprints. Okay. All error coins are essentially coin misprints. They are always the result of a mistake made during the manufacturing process at the mint, right? Rather than post mint damage. I believe those coins that I showed you previously are post mint damage okay now error coins can be divided into three general categories all right the first one here states planchet errors a planchet error is another word for on um, the blanks that are used to make coins errors in the category involve improper preparation of coin planchets example include clipped planchets that are the wrong shape Planches that are the wrong thickness, and even planches that are mistakenly left blank. So as you see here, this is a quarter the bust of George Washington put on the wrong size um, plank. Planchet, I'm sorry, planchet. The quarter was struck on the wrong planchet. Now, through that process, that person who create who, who who's on shift at the mint definitely made a mistake now how many coins left out of the mint on the wrong planchet now mistakes do happen so not like it, it it would never occur but how likely um does this happen on a daily shift or every day right so the next error we we'll call die errors the process of minting coins involves dies that are in part the lettering numbering and images onto the surface of the coin now one die is used for the obverse the front or head side 
of the coin and the other is used for the reverse, the back or tail side. If there is an issue or flaw with either die, it can lead to errors such as doubling or design elements or a mismatching of two dies. Now, the letter, the later case results in what is known as a mule coin. And we found a couple mule coins, um, such as the Sacagawea dollar and also the United States presidential dollars. Those coins have been going for thousands of dollars if they are found. So there are some examples of coins mismatch, or they call them mule coins, right? Now, this right here is a double doubling. This happens through the die errors, a repunch mint mark error on the Lincoln cent. Let me see if I, if I can make this a little larger for those who need to see it. Let me see how it looks. You see the doubling there, right? The doubling of the D. So these are die errors. These can happen. All right, let's go on to the third, a strike error. So we have strike errors. Striking is the step in the minting process where the design from the die is impressed onto the coin. Strike errors include off-centered or misaligned strikes, designs struck on the wrong sides of planchet, and other oddities. So this can happen when the planchet side size is off. If this coin is found in circulation, it can be worth money. How could it be worth money? It can be found. You can go get it graded. Once you get it graded, they will tell you if there's an MS60 or an MS70, depending on the grade of the coin of the strike, and they can give you a value. Um, but this is one of the things you may not find in circulation unless someone, you know, sells it at auction. You may find it on a third party like eBay. But I, really, I doubt that you may find these at your local 7-Eleven by accident, right? All right, so here it goes. It says, again, it's important to note that all error coins are made at the mint. Once again, again, it's important to note that all error coins are made at the mint. Their release into circulation is always a mistake or a oversight. This distinguished coin misprint from coins that simply have post mint damage changes to the coin that happen after they leave the mint such damaged coins hold no value for collectors and are not considered errors okay so people are looking for the error coins now now it tells you here how to spot an error coins how to spot error coins finding error coins is rare but not impossible Keep in mind that all of these error types tend to occur in batches of coins as the U.S. Mint strikes coins for mass production. A die flaw or a misstrike will affect all the coins from a particular production run. So there are usually hundreds or a few thousand coins with the same error originating from the mint. However, there are sometimes no reliable mintage estimates for coins with specific errors due to their accidental nature. Okay. I want to go into that right there because we got to think about this. When it comes down to finding certain errors, like I found some last year, I found that we had the Drool and George. Okay. For some of the 2022 coins, you had the Drool and George. You had the gash on the back of George's neck. Uh, what else have you found? Um, we found that in the Maya Angelou coin, we had the pearl in her hand. This is all on the reverse side. Um, some other things that were found was you had the doubling in her earring, um, Maya Angelou's earring. Um, one of the famous doublings were on the Duke Ellington quarter, right? The Duke Ellington quarter, where his name was across the piano, you've seen doubling. Now, people were selling these coins of course, on third uh, market uh, like eBay and other um, sites, auction sites, and they were going for a nice bit of money, definitely more than a quarter value. So as this article stated, you will spot some error coins, you know, because 
through the process at the mint, things happen, right? Let me see who's next comment. We got Doug Hardy in the house. Hey, Doug, what's going on? I appreciate you coming in, Doug. Today we're talking about how coins are made. Right now, I'm going over some um, dye errors. Brown Sugar, how you feeling? Nice to see you. Always good to see you, Brown Sugar and Doug Harding, Rocky Mountain Bear, Con 671. And also, we have a new person in the house. Thanks for coming in, Jim Turner. And we can't forget the one and only Rockamaz. Thank you so much for coming in today. All right. So, guys, I'm going over some of the things, how to spot dot errors. All right. Let's go a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, before we go any further, let's talk about the gold price today. The gold price is $1,974.30, okay, up $16.97, and still was looking pretty good. Um, you should have bought yesterday. It went up $0.76, cents, $23.33. Those who like platinum, $902.81, up $17.06. Um, and you have palladium at $1,060.70, up $25.77. Not bad at all. Not bad at all for our metals. All right, so we go. How to spot error coins. Okay, so here we go. However, there are sometimes... It says, this, however, there are sometimes no reliable mintage estimates for coins with specific errors due to their accidental nature. You will need a keen eye and plenty of patience to successfully spot an error coin. Knowing what to look for is crucial. Noting an unusual looking coin is a good start, but being familiar with famous error types is an even better approach. Some coin errors are obvious, while others are more subtle and may require a magnified glass to see. Now, for those who do search for error coins, I have this right here. Um, if you go on my Instagram, I got a message from Tom Love um, Microscopes. They're doing a giveaway of their microscopes and also other accessories. So for those who do like to um look for error coins i found that this is pretty cool this is pretty cool to watch to look at you can see it with the screen right here you have your magnifying glass you have a nice base you can hook this up to your computer and guess what you can now watch the coins um real clear and see all the detail so i really like this if you um have one put a one in the chat but if you don't go to my instagram Enter into the contest for November, and you may have a chance to win one. But I also have a link to buy them. Um, I am an affiliate from Tom Love if you want to support the channel. But go to my Instagram at JTCornRings2, and you will enter into the contest that Tom Love has opportunities to win this. Okay? All right. So let's go a little further, guys. So it says here, Aside from carefully scrutinizing your pocket change, there are a few other places you should be looking. One popular strategy is to search through coin rolls. That's probably the biggest um, chan um, topics that coin channels and our platform do. I see a lot of people searching the coin rolls. And you see 2022 is when I've seen a lot of the errors, as I described earlier, like on the on the uh, Maya Angelou quarter, and you have some like um, the kill. I think her name was Killmonger or Kill. What's the lady's name? Was it Killmonger or Killmonger was in inside the uh, Black Panther? What was her name? Kill Killmonger. What was her last name? Good gracious, it was something. Kill man. If anyone knows in the chat, <laughs> let me know. But. At all those 2022 women, um, the, the women um, quarters that came out that year, the um, commemorative quarters, they all had errors and some type of errors. Either it was Jewel and George, the pimple on the nose, or some type of doubling on the reverse side. <laughs> I forgot the lady's name. Forgive me. But anyway, we go a little further because you have me. I'll be messing up all night. 
So you can search through coin rolls, okay? All right, so also cherry picking is another common approach for error coins. Um, this simply means carefully looking through a group of coins one by one. Okay, you might do so with a coin lot offered as an estate sale or the bargain bin at a local coin shop, okay? Now, this right here is a list of error coins worth money. Everyone loves to see this. So over the years, there has been many valuable error coins to list them all here. But these are some of the most prominent in U.S. mint history, okay? The order of this list goes from lowest denomination, the penny, to the highest. All right, let's check it out. We got the 1921, the 22D, um, plain Lincoln cent, okay? Let's see how this one looked. This one went for $500 each. All right. We see that here. 1920, no mint mark. This is a Denver mint mark, but it has no mint mark. Went for $500 each. You had the uh, 1943 copper Lincoln cent. All right. Not only were the five cent nickels switched to 35 percent silver during this year from 1942 to 1945, but the penny also briefly got a new composition for one year. 1943, the copper shortage prompted the mint to switch the one cent coin to a steel composition coated in zinc. Everyone remembers this, the steel penny. So one billion of these um, steel cents were produced in 1943. That's one billion. All right. However, a very small number of pennies, perhaps a few as 15, were incorrectly struck by normal bronze planchet that year. So the 1943 bronze cents are exceptionally valuable, easily crossing $100,000 threshold. One example even sold in a private transaction for $1 million. Absolutely amazing. So right here is that 1943 penny. Can you imagine running into this penny in, your, in circulation and able to sell it for $100,000 or even $1 million? Absolutely amazing. Okay. Then you have the 1944 steel Lincoln cent. The U.S. Mint resumed normal production of the pennies made of copper. However, just like the year before, a handful of Lincoln cents were accidentally struck in the wrong composition. This time, the culprit was the leftover zinc-coated steel planchets. So it is a bit comical that the Mint made the same mistake in reverse two years in a row. Somebody got fired. That's all I got to say, right? So... In addition to creating another rarity, the mishap was created. Confusion was numismatics and collectors in the following decades. This is crazy. So this is a mistake that happened two years in a row. And everyone knows and also seen one of these before, the 1944 steel Lincoln cent. So you had the 1955 double, um, D, double die on obverse Lincoln cent. So this right here is really doubling. i never seen a coin double like this. Look at that right there. The, and everything is doubled. Remember the typewriters back in the day? You used to type, and then you would hit it, you strike it, and sometimes you get a double. This is how this looks. 19, the, everything is doubled. You got in God we trust doubled, liberty doubled, 1955. This is, this, now this is a truly a double die obverse. And this coin right here, even a low-grade example of this coin, can sell for $1,000, you know? So this goes on and on. I won't belabor you um, with reading every last one, but let's go real fast, okay? We have the 1937D, um, the third leg buffalo nickel. Everyone has heard about this here. The third leg, the one, two, three, the one that's imaginary right here, three legs. This right here, you can hardly see it. Also, we have the 
1942 one mercury dimes i think i you see here that that doubling right there 1940 12 that's what it looked like the two did not go over the one we have a 1975 no s proof roosevelt dime okay so a lot of these things we also have um this one the 2004 the extra leaf wisconsin state and this is something everyone's seen i've seen this before too i haven't i never had one in my possession but you're looking at coins that come in into the, the years that we could have seen a lot of these errors like not seeing um the, i mean seeing, seeing the difference in the wheat there these pieces can go for 500 dollars today either a high relief or a low leaf variety can sell from 50 dollars to 100 dollars. you you can still try to find these these are in still circulation i believe so, so many things. You have the 1956 Bugs Bunny Franklin half dollar. I've never seen this. So, it's called the Bugs Bunny. So, this one here, it says the 1956 Bugs Bunny Franklin half dollar. You see the little fangs there, I guess. Then you have the 2000 P Sacagawea dollar, the Washington quarter mule. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is when it's high as $50,000, guys. So this is a mule error. You have the obverse side of the presidential dollars. And then you have the reverse of the Sacagawea. This coin, only 19 examples are known. And virtually all of them are in the mint state. The average sale price for these mules is about fifty thousand dollars. Can you imagine? You have the um, two thousand seven presidential dollar missing the edge lettering. Another thing, this was definitely done at the mint because the, the edge should be there. So you have all these coins that happen at the mint these are certifiable mint errors okay so we have to like basically understand that there's post mint and those that happen at the mint so watching the coin video in the beginning and you know how coins are made you can actually know what step where these errors um kind of were created you know the lettering a lot of coins had mislettering because when they went to that step they slipped so they are known that there's some coins that's supposed to have the lettering on the rim definitely had a lot of stuff messed up at that point so that's why it's important to understand when the coin was made how coins are made so we, we can kind of establish which ones were real and which ones are fake you know so yeah i never seen the bugs bunny franklin that's my first time ever seeing that ever. So I have a couple um, Benjamins in my collection. So I'm going to go check to see exactly if I can find me one. You know, I want to go find one. I, I do have a 1963, a 1962. So I'll be looking real close to see if I can find some things. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to get ready to play the game. For those who just came in, Hit that like button, okay? Hey, if you like the content so far, don't be too shy. Hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. Get more content like this. All right, guys. So make sure you hit that like button on your way in. And we are about to get ready to play one or two games. For those who want to stay and play, put a one in the chat. That gives me the idea how many games we're going to actually play today. Um, so I can make that uh watch hour right now my watch hours are still the same youtube is playing games they are actually playing games today they um gave me 29 um 29 then i did two live streams and the last time i realized they didn't my, my hours didn't move <laughs> so let me show you exactly where i'm at right now There you go. 
So 2,929 or 2,926. They took three hours away from me. So hopefully today's live stream will be um, counted into those three to the 3,000 watch hours. And then hopefully this month of November and December, I can definitely chip away at the last 1,000 hours so I can get to the 4,000 hour um, watch hour um, goal. So just want to make sure. But I thank you all for helping me get to that point. Just letting you know that majority of all of my letters and, and, and stickers and gifts for October has been mailed out. I still have to redo the second place poor, um, the second place silver pour. Um, I will be doing that um, soon. I couldn't get, get a chance to do it um, today to send it out, but it will. Brown Sugars, um, Brand, um, Brandon or uh, Great Scott, um, Cons, 671, um, everyone who ordered a stick of Doug Harding, all your stuff has been mailed out today. Um, so hopefully you will get it um, sometime this week or next week, beginning of next week. But thank you, guys. I appreciate you. <laughs> Definitely um, love you guys for helping me get to that point. So hope you enjoy your, your gifts and all. All right, guys. We're going to play our game of, you know, Simple Hangman. We got to play it. We got to. So let's get ready. Let's pick which category we want to look at. And all I need is a category and I need a letter. That's all we need. And all we got to do is play this for 20 minutes, guys. 20 minutes to meet the hour. And then we can go ahead and um, end the live. So can I got, got 20 minutes? You're welcome, Brown Sugar. Thank you. I appreciate you. 100% for all that you do for the JT Corn Rings channel. Okay. So, guys, go ahead and let's figure out which category we're going to play. And we will start the game as soon as we come back from this. Take pride in your stack and wear it. Johnson Toe is an American craftsman who could take your favorite coin design and create art that you'd be very proud to wear and something very special to share. JT Coin Rings, handcrafts, handmade jewelry, especially for you. All right, guys. So there we go. We got the JT Coin Rings out the way with the advertisement. You know I got to do that. Got to self-promote. Also ask you guys to hit the like button. If you like what you see, the like button is free. Hit that like button, it helps with the algorithm. If you'd like to contribute to the channel in any form or fashion, donate wise, hit me up at PayPal at jtcornrings at gmail.com. If you are in America and have that app we call Cash App, it's called Dollar Sign JT Corn Rings. These things help the channel just to move on by doing giveaways. Um, also helps out with the mailing of the giveaways and all things. But if you can't do that, if you just want to be here and help me with the watch hours, hit that like button. Hit that like button. It helps with everything. So thanks. Thank you very much for being here. Let's pick a category. We can do foods, games, animals, sports, or random. All right, we got six people in the chat. So give me a category. We got one, we got two, we got three, we got four. All right, we gotta have one. All right, which one are we gonna do? Which category are we gonna pick? We got foods. As I know, I love food. So there we go. We have a nice long puzzle. Let's see how many letters we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine we have to fill. Let me put my banner up there. We have food. 
Uh, so right there, so we know we got food. All we need is the first letter. All right, it's going to be an A, E, I, O, or U, or sometimes a Y. Which letter are we going to pick first? You got my, yeah, got my baby girl here. She about to leave out on me. You got brown sugar. Says she want a B. Let's do that. Is there a B in the house? There's no B. That's okay. No B, but there is a letter up there. We it may be an A. It may be a C. You just don't know, but we just need one letter to figure it out. Just one letter, and it may give an opportunity for someone to do a snipe. That's all we need. Just one. Just one. You want to say bye bye, baby? Say bye bye to the crowd. My daughter's gonna say goodbye. Bye. Love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. That's my baby. Long live coins are in the house. How you feeling? All right, Rakama says, give me an E for excellent. Tell your mama say hello. Okay. We got E, we got two E's. That's what I like to see. I like to see when we get we pick one letter and we get multiple across the board. It makes it a lot. They said bye, sweetheart. <laughs> Aunt Brown Sugar said bye bye. Yeah, so we got E. Good way to go. What is another letter? Do we have another letter? Another letter on the board. We have E. We only have one mishap. That's it. That could be the only one because I trust the ones inside this chat right now can definitely, most definitely solve this. And we have Rock and Mars that said, you know what? I'm going for the snipe. Is it casserole? Let's see. Is there a C? There's no C. Okay, that was a good try. You can't, hey, all you can do is try. Casserole was a good try. You know, you did see two E's, right? Two E's kind of threw, gave it away. <laughs> Guys, we have here the JT Corn Ring pendant made by McKinney's Corn Rings. I'm going to try to get a commercial up for them. Definitely going to do a giveaway one month for one of these. Made from a 1964 half dollar. I think you guys would like one. And I'm thinking they give a discount code for those who want to buy one for the holidays. And I think it'd be a good little thing. Put on a nice silver chain. McKinney's Corn Ring. Check them out. All right. Anyone has another letter? I, hey, I know it's tough trying to figure this stuff out. We got five people in the chat. All we need is one more letter. Do I need to help? Let me go ahead. Let me say an A. Is there an A? There is an A. Okay. Maybe that helps a little bit. So it could have been casserole, but guess what? The first letter is not a C. But we know for a fact that we have two E's, E at the end, an E in the middle, and an A for the second letter. All we got to figure out now, what is the first letter? Okay. Anyone has a clue? Let's see here. Let me see. I think, let me see. Can I make, be so bold and pick another letter? Okay. I'm going to try an S. Oh, no S. Okay. So it's not an S. Let me see here. What else could it be? It's not a C. I'm trying to figure out what is that first letter. 
Mm. I'm going to see here. This is kind of difficult. Let me see. It's not an S. Huh. I'm going to try an O. I'm going to try an O. Is there an O? Oh, no O. You see how good I am with this, right? All right, we got two more tries. Two more tries. Let me see here. Hmm. Let me think deep with this. I'm going to go for... Let me see here. This give me a little break, a mental break. Let me read the message from Long Live Coins. At JT Coin Rings, I think the ring size I'm looking for is about nine and nine and a half. That sounds about right. Okay. Got to be exact, though, because coin rings have to be shaped. Um, the end has to be shaped differently than the cut edge. So when I wear it, when, you, when I make it, I want to make sure that the ring goes over the knuckle. So I, I just need that uh, that that correct uh, ring size. You, you can go to Wally's World, so we call it Walmart or, or somewhere, and you can get it for free. If you need me to mail you out a ring sizer, I can mail that out to you. Just email me at jtcornrings at gmail.com, and I'll send it out to your address, and you can um, have the ring sizer, and then um, all that good stuff, okay? All right. Long live corn says, give me an M. All right. Is there an M? There's no M. Okay, because I was over there hopping now. You know, I'm over there hopping. I, I, was, I was doing some very bad mistakes. I made some mistakes. Then, no way. I got to, I have got to. Oh, please. Jug at me. Come on. Don't make me. Don't make me hop after you. See, so we right there. <laughs> we we on one leg. So, but Brown Sugar says she thinks she knows what it is. Is there an S? Let's see. All right, there's no S. I already tried the S. R S. So there's no S, unfortunately. Yeah, it's good to get fitted. It's good to get fitted. Just to make. To be sure, it's all about the shaping of the corn ring and all. I want to make sure that the shape is great and um, and and it fits well. You know, I can always resize it, but it's always good to get it right the first time. Okay. All right. So Rock and Ma says, "You think you know what it is? Is it tangerine? It looks pretty good. Let's see. Is there a T? There is a T." N G way to go. I think they got it. Is there an R? I congratulations. <laughs> Rockama saved us. <laughs> Look, my two mis I had about two or three mistakes. I was kind of afraid. I didn't think <laughs> it wasn't gonna be fi figured out. I did not see tangerine. Now, I went to the supermarket today and bought me some tangerines. I would have thought in my head, but, you know, I was not thinking. Good way to go, Rocket Miles, for the win. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes, nice. And everyone's giving you congratulations because, look, I did not see it. But we definitely need that snipe. Thank you for that snipe. <laughs> Came in. I'm going to have to create... Um, Y'all oh, snipe. Yeah, that was a kind of tough one. It kind of threw me for a loop. It kind of threw me for a loop for sure. <laughs> I had no idea. No idea whatsoever. But yeah, guys. How you just ask right to so, damn, how did you see that? Well played. Yeah, I did not see it at all. I think for sure. When she when she saw that T. And the placements of the A and the E, it probably triggered right in the head. But I, I'm telling you, I did not see it. 
my next my next letter was not going to be a t so way to go so yeah guys i appreciate you all for being here we got 56 um 34 we got four more less than four minutes to play another game that would get me to the one hour mark would y'all like to help me get to that hour mark by playing one more game all i need is one more game in me let's see you can pick the subject hopefully it's an easy one go ahead and pick the category or we can rock out tell me what you're buying today you gonna have y'all bought any silver have you received anything perry a is in the house perry a thank you long live corn says one more okay brown sugar said let's go let's go silver is the category <laughs> yeah i wish we had a silver as a category we definitely need one. We definitely need one. I'm going to have to do a trivial. Yeah. I'm going to do a trivial. Says, yep. Open my RP set from the mint. Okay. Did you did you have it on your, um? do you have a video of it? Of it? Let me know if you have a, a video that you placed on your channel. And I, I can go check it out. I can remember it. Long live coins. Um, you made two rings for me, my friend. I had, I did. Look, <laughs> look, look. You know, Perry A. Your name probably, th it's probably throws me off right now. But I'm, uh, if you said I did, I did. <laughs> it's probably, it probably goes by another name. It says not yet, but it's coming. Okay, my memory. It leaves me. But yes, if you say I did, I made the rings for you. I'm, I'm sure. You, you, by behind the scenes, you give me your, your your whole name and your real name. I probably remember it off the back. What rings did I make for you? Okay, Frank the Tank nine 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 is the other name. Okay, what two rings did I make for you? Refresh my memory, because I know what rings. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm getting, I always tell people I'm getting better. I'm definitely getting better. So I appreciate you for enjoying what I made at that time. But I, I believe at this time, uh, I'm understanding more. I'm understanding more. And I'm, I'm learning what to do, what not to do. And I'm, I'm taking more risk in the coin ring making and the ring making. So I feel that this is a, like a sweet spot for me, you know. Oh, you didn't you so long live coins, please let me know when your video is coming so I can promote it and go check it out as well. But I'll make sure that I go by your channel and check out some of the the videos you do have up. Cause I, I don't think I've been over to your channel. So let me make sure I get to do that ASAP long live coins okay all right i'm now a subscriber and i have some coins you did one a mail call four hours ago and you also did a silver gold a solomium part two so you got a couple things Got a couple things here that I can go check out. So let me go ahead and put the watch later on this one. Save the watch later. So I got two, two of your, your videos I'm watching. All right, let's pick a category real quick, guys. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm excited to get my got to get my rings out. Just let me know. If not, if you haven't got it done, I can mail it out to you. And we can get the ball rolling. Let me know what ring uh, which coin you would like me to make into a ring so I can have it ready. Okay. All right. So we have a category. Because we unfortunately, like Perry A, we don't have silver as a category. 
Uh, no problem at all. I'm going to go check these videos out. I'll be watching them while I'm at work tonight. All right. So what category do we have, guys? Or should I pick it? We got foods, games, animals, sports, and random. All right. Why not? Let's go for animals. All right. Okay, we got. Oh, I re, I chose it already. Okay, Rock Ma said food, and we got animal. I, I chose animals. Let's pick animals. All right, let's go for the first letter. This is a short one. All right, this should be a short one, and this right here will be animals. This should be a pretty easy one here. All right, let's go, guys. What's the first letter? Give me the first letter that we should pick from. It's gonna be an A. Okay, Perry C to give me a C. Let's try a C. Is there a C on the board? There's no C. Okay, good try though. Good try. All right, what else do we have? There's no we know for a fact there's no C. <laughs> there's no C. So what could it be? Okay, Perry D says, you know what? He's persistent. Give me a D. Is there a D on the board? There's no D. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? We've come, we, we, we've been here before. We've been here before. Most definitely. <laughs> Is there an, a G? Let's say, Brown Sugar says, good question. At JT, I have a friend going to Liberia. Which coin should I have him pick up? Oh, wow. Any one of the coins. Any one of the coins would be fantastic. Um, they, if they have any silver ones there, which I don't think they have any in, in circulation, I would love to see their, their newly minted coins or any minted coin I would like to see for sure. I'll have to look that up and see what they have on um, these upcoming years and how they look because I have all older coins from the 60s and 70s. Brown Sugar says, give me a G. Is there a G in the house? There is no G. Okay, long live coin says, give me an R. Is there an R in the house? There's no R. <laughs> Rock of Mars said, give me an S. Is there an S? There's no S. <laughs> and Perry says, you know what? We're going to try for fish. Now this right here, we got to let it be known where we at now. We are hopping. No way. I got to, I have got to. Oh, please, jog at me, come on. Don't make me, don't make me hop after you. We are hopping. So let's see if Perry A can save us. Is there an F as in fish on the board? There is an F. Okay, okay. So we do have an F. We are saved. We are saved. We definitely got it here. <laughs> we definitely got it. <laughs> All right. So we got it. We, we do have here. We have a snipe. Brown sugar says, Is it bear? Is there a B? Oh, there's no B. Oh, no. <laughs> It was wolf. It was wolf. But hey, then we have Rockama said calf. And Brown Sugar said calf afterwards. As we see that it's wolf. Hey, we were close, guys. We were absolutely close. We have met the one hour and five minute mark. Long live is still kicking out. Long, long live coins. It is over. <laughs> Long live. We got it. It's, it's Wolf. We definitely didn't get it. We didn't get it this time, but it's okay. We will get it next time, guys. I appreciate you all for coming today. Make sure you do me a favor before leaving. If you haven't um, done it so far, do me a favor. Hit that like button, okay? Hit the like button. 
if you like support the channel in any form of way paypal at jt at gmail.com or cash app at dollar sign jt corn rings all that is in the description below okay but if not please do me a favor before you leave out hit the like button and if you're watching this in replay make sure you comment below okay i would like to read your comments let me know what you want the next topic to be for the live stream okay i appreciate that i really appreciate that all let me know what the next topic should be and i'll look it up and we'll talk about that okay so guys i appreciate you i love you and i'll see you tomorrow take care take pride in your stack and wear it johnson toe is an american craftsman who could take your favorite coin design and create art that you'd be very proud to wear and something very special to share jt coin rings handcrafts handmade jewelry especially for